here. Um, and that just some of my perspective and there's a little difference obviously between uh, working seven man, which is, you know, we'll, we do it in, in five, but I think a lot of this line of scrimmage things apply to either one. And, uh, you know, sometimes we use a lot of five man mechanics in college and the NFL on a lot of these plays. So anyway, it's glad to be here. And, uh, like I said, hopefully I have something you can use next year. So we're going to take a look at this first play here. Uh, just some of the action outside for wing guys, and Kent's going to kind of walk us through what he's seeing uh, that would cause a flag not to be thrown or to be thrown. So let's play that through, Kurt. So, I mean, it looks suspicious from this time that you got a hold on the tackle. I think as a wing guy, when I start to see a play like this, because yeah, I know that the tackle is the first thing I'm going to look at. I see this guy running outside. I want to go right to the tackle. And I think the mistake the guy makes here is he doesn't head into the backfield. I would take some steps back earlier than this. And that way you get the angle uh, to see, you know, what's going on. Because if you get, if you stay on the line here, you're not sure what happened. And uh, I think that this is a play the deep wing threw on. And I think the referee should have this as well. I think that this should be two guys up front because this is, especially here, uh, forget about the receiver at the bottom. That's kind of where you're going right away as a wing guy. That's your first block. You know, all the interior stuff the umpire should have right there. You should, that's one you, you should have a good look at. And like I said, the referee should be on this as well. But I'm, I know I have a tendency when we run on running plays, when I start to see it even come to least bit wide, I start to head into, slide into the offensive backfield because it gives me a much better angle. So Ken, do you think this guy was a little late going into the backfield then? Yes, I do. You know, he just started uh, a little bit before that. I think he had a pretty good look at this, but you know, it's, uh, like I said, I, I like to take a step back unless they run right up the middle or something because it just gets me going that way and, and usually I got a better angle to see what's, uh, What's because usually on run plays the tackle is where I where I'm going to look, especially on this play. If there's a tight end and a tackle, I'm probably going to see the tight end, and then the tackle and that. So I would I try to move back uh, as quick as I could. Kent, a question from the chats. Uh, so when you move back, are you moving a yard, two yards? What how, how, what drives how far back you go? I just think reading the play. Okay. I want to. I want to go back so I can, like I said, see, make an angle because a lot of this is angles, you know, because this play, it looks suspicious. You look at the tackle, the way it's, his body moves and the way the guy's shoulder dips, it sure looks like a hold. Um, now, sometimes that happens and it's not, you know, but if you, so I would make sure I can get a good angle looking in there. I don't think I have a rule of thumb of any particular yardage, just that I'm, I'm moving with a purpose to get an angle to see everything where, like here, I hate to use the word straight line, but that's kind of what happens here. You can't get straight line and probably doesn't really see what's happening inside there. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's what I would do. That's why I think it's, you're much more beneficial to start moving back earlier than you are too late, obviously. Same play now. We're looking at the uh, end zone shot. So we kind of determine this a hold. Now let's watch the end of the play. So right there, we got a hold. Lance Grimm's guy does a good job of coming up, looking out, coming up slow. There's no reason to run up. Keeps his head out toward the sideline, watching the players. And in this case, there's no problem. So I don't think you need to go in the bench area because it's all close. If you sense any trouble, drop the beanbag and get in there. But this is, you know, pretty clean. Guy goes in, comes straight out. And if, if you're on the opposite wing and you see a guy go into the bench area, I think it's the opposite wing, you can come across and have that spot for him in case he loses it, you know. Because uh, you can see where he was spotting the ball, you know. So 
sometimes you don't drop the beanbag in the exact spot or, you know, you get excited and go in there because you got stuff going on. But on the other side, you should always be kind of the backup of where that spot is. Great. Let's look at another one here. Yeah, this one didn't give us a lot of wing. Yeah. No, not at all. Let's jump to uh, six, seven, would it be seven, Osri? I think seven's a point. Yeah. So I think we were looking right here, aren't we? At the bottom guy, the, yeah. the guy coming around. And again, it's a suspicious flag that we, I think the Kent, the, the whole thing about this one that is just if you don't see a good foul, I mean, let it. Right. Let it how go do you slow yourself it. down, Kent? How do you slow yourself down when you think you saw something? But how do you do you, do you just take a breath? I mean, can you give us some hints on how to yeah, slow right. it down? I've and talk about this a lot. I don't like to see a flag out immediately, really on anything. If you take a pause on any foul before you throw, just kind of, you know, try to be relaxed and wait. Maybe you talk yourself out of this one or you reach for your flag and you take your time and you go, uh, this, I, I assume they call holding on this. Yeah. But I think it's just learn to slow down. I think, and I like to slow my body down. I don't like to be running around. I mean, you got to move when you have to, but when you have your body calm, it kind of slows your mind down too. And I think it just, as soon as you see something, you should just wait to call it instead of, you see contact and, and I mean, and we talk about, well, this is more on pass plays, we talk about a two-step process. And this is something with illegal contact, which obviously isn't in a high school or college game, but we see a lot of mistakes made and Terrence can, you know, answer this too. Because people see contact and the flag comes out immediately. If they would just take their time and look back in that situation, they, you know, the quarterbacks have the ball in that. I think you can do that on any foul. Is just take your time, let the play play out, and then if, if something really s jumps out, then throw your flag. Because I, I mean, I, I say this, and you know, usually Terrence and I both talk to the Rocky Mountain group, and that he always asks suggestions. I'd say all of us. I don't care who you are, you got to slow down because uh, it happens to everybody where you go, you just, if you go too fast, you're going to make mistakes. You know, it's just gotta, you just got to learn to slow down. Tell yourself to slow down. You know? and if you think you're going slow, go even slower. Isn't that right, Kent? That's right. Yeah, I think that whole, I mean, we've been preaching this a lot our entire session is about slowing down, moving with a purpose. But I mean, he just makes a great point is, I mean, almost think of it as a two-step process. You know, you see that action, process it, kind of see how the play is going. Did that action really affect the play? And then let's just drop our flag. But I've done it too many times to count, but I react to something I see and I throw it and I'm 10 for 10 as far as being wrong on that. So just slow down. And I think there was a great point that Kent made, slow your body down. If you slow your body down, it will slow your mind down because this is all mental, believe me. If you're not mentally exhausted after a game, you're doing something wrong. So Kent and uh, Terrence, can you talk about, when you're talking about slowing down, it, it, it seems like watching guys at, at a higher level, even their, their signals are slower and controlled. And it just, it looks so much better and it looks so more confident. And I think it, you gain confidence in the coaching staff and players when you have that good look. How can you, how can you tell us how to look better when we signal and move when we signal? Well, I think it's a good point that if you, when you slow down, and, you know, you can go too slow with your signals, but, you know, if you just, the confidence in them, you know, like, watch this play, guy gives like one incomplete signal, you know, you know, and doesn't have to overdo it, obviously, it's an obvious incomplete pass in that, but um, I just, to me, you know, and I think about touchdowns, when guys take their time and watch the play and the player rolls around and then they just go up with a touchdown really slow, it just makes it look like I know what I'm doing. You know, so I, I think you just got to, it's just, it's, it's really hard to do. I think it's one of the hardest things to do as an official, slow you down, slow your signals down. You know, like the, on this, the one we showed before where the guy goes out of bounds, you know, the guy's coming up, killing the clock, going, you know, really poised and taking his time. And that's, you know, because when you look excited, 
that gives a bad image to the teams and uh, probably leads to making some mistakes. So I think it's just something you just, you know, something you got to think about in practice, not, not during the game, but when you're getting ready, you know, I, I try to do stuff where maybe even practice signals just to go slow that I make sure I'm doing where it looks the way it should. You know, I like, I like real quick, Mark. I, I mean, one thing I'll add in here real quick, I like to start, you know, the morning of the game for me. I mean, I'll get, up at, I'll get up at a early time. I'm always up anyway, but I just go through the whole motions of being slow as, as far as getting dressed or getting in the shower, brushing your teeth. I want to start slowing down right then. That's what helps me kind of slow down my mind when it's time, you know, for game time. So I want to start as soon as I wake up. Yeah, I was just going to say, Kent, what, what do you do? What are the, some of the things that you do before the game or the day, night, night of or morning of the game uh, to kind of help you get in a state of mind where you're slow? I think some of the things Terrence said, you know, I just try to relax, you know, try to relax on, during the day because it's easy not to, you know, because you're excited. It's game day. And, you know, I just, you know, try to tell myself that I'm, you know, that not to get excited. And like Terrence says, I don't want to do anything fast that day, you know, and I go out, you know, when the teams come out, we go out and warm up like they do and that. And I try to use that time to make sure I'm doing those things, you know, cause they'll run plays and you, know, you try to get yourself in that rhythm that you need to then not during the, not when the game starts. So I just, it, uh, I mean, before, Every game I have a card, you know, game card, but I have another card that I write some goals down and one of them is always to go slow. And I always read those ahead of time of things I want to do that day to make myself, you know, stuff I need to work on or like things I hope I do that day anyway. So, you know, and try to concentrate on that part of it. All right, we're going to work at the goal line now, the money line. Let's take it back to the beginning where we focused at here. I think there's another hold. This is the, the wide out at the bottom. Right here. Hey, Kent, uh, some of these guys are asking, what are some of the other goals you write down, or, or Terrence, besides slowing down? Is it a by game by game, or do you start off at the beginning of the season and say, here's what I want to, here's some of the goals I want to accomplish season long, or this month, or the next three games what what else do you are you goal, goaling if you will i do it every week this stuff i want to do you know and I, I don't set goals of like working a certain game but what do i need to do you know some of the, you know line of scrimmage how am i going to handle trips plays you know that are complicated kind of maybe something i didn't do good the last game or well and or maybe you got teams that have some tendency versus other teams in that so those are just just things i feel that i need to that either and sometimes I try to pick things that haven't happened in a while that you know that haven't had in a game so so maybe I can be ahead of the be ahead of the uh curve and not uh you know something I messed up the week before so so I mean, in, in our five-man mechanics this uh I think we would do similar to what you guys do you guys are at the goal line I assume right. so we're at the goal line if we snap inside the five here after, after the snap. So. Just, you know, not taking this play in particular, but I like to, when I got the goal line responsibility, from wherever it is, and, and our mechanic is the seven, so, but I like to move in an angle so I don't have to watch this play. Not that anything happens here, but he's at the pylon. At the snap, I would want to move at an angle so I'm off the pylon right now and standing and not moving back. I want so to be right now, he's, he should have moved off the pylon because the ball's been well snapped. Yeah, he should move and back. Now he's moving back. He can, and now he's moving back because that way you can just sit there and watch. And obviously this play, there's no – well, it doesn't matter. But uh, in this play too, I think he should, he should probably see this. This might be one you might tell the referee to pick up. <laughs> I mean, 
So, well, I mean, someone should. The, yep. You're the, right. In the seven man, the the deep the side judge field judge down there should have this guy all the way, but wing could help a little bit because you know it's. I'd be more worried about offensive pass interference because he's blocking, but he never gets beyond the line. You know. So we were talking about this right before seven thirty, and some of you guys may have heard it, but we're talking about the action here and and. What are you reading the players doing down here as far as what are they guarding or what are they blocking for or blocking or not trying to block, things like that, Kent? Yeah, I mean, I'm like this play, this guy obviously not going for a pass, but the defender, he's kind of shadowing the quarterback, but he's not really, you know, he's – right now he – you know, it's easy when you slow it down, but he, right now he, he kind of rushes and then he sees the quarterback's going to throw the ball, so he drops back in coverage. You know, he, he kind of, you know, there's no one back there, but, uh, you know, the plays like this, it just, you look at the play and you go, what did, what really happened? You know, was there advantage, disadvantage? You really, these guys are really not doing much, you know. So, the, Kim, look, real quick. So, let's say you got to look at this from the line of scrimmage standpoint and your referee through on this. What, what, what kind of dialogue would you have with him or what would you go up and say to him? Well, I'd ask him what he had, and then if he it's like, hey, I got holding. holding, I'd say, you know, I had a pretty good look at it, and I didn't really see much restriction, you know. And plus, they just kind of – They're, like, the, happy to be there, right? They're happy to be there, and it didn't really affect the play because his quarterback just threw it away, and this guy wasn't going to you – know, he's six, seven yards away from him. So he just – you know, this, I don't know what this play is supposed to be because you got a guy blocking and no one out there trying to catch a pass. Yeah. So they've kind of screwed this thing up to start with. Yeah. You know, someone did because, um, you know, that's probably not a good play. Terrence, I love the question. I, I, we we had uh, had that come up a couple weeks ago, and and it's very hard for officials, especially when you got different levels of um, experience, and um, sometimes our wings are some of our younger, newer guys, and to to come in with information over a veteran white hat like us, Ree, um, I love that that question you just asked. What what do you bring forward? Because um, I think we as, a, as uh, throwing officials would immediately go, what are you doing challenging me? There might be this defense that yeah. uh, comes up. And so I, I, I wish we could be better at that conversation and what information to share. So, that, um, yeah, the more you guys can talk through that, the better. I love it. And, I, you know, Kurt, you make great points. I think it all kind of starts in pregame, too. I mean, with the white hat and just, say, the older officials that are on there with maybe a younger official. I know that's what happened to me a lot coming up through my career, and I'm sure Kent can say the same thing. I mean, most of the people that I work with are like, hey, if you have some information, bring it. I don't care if I got 20 years over you. You know, just bring the information. So it, it, is, it, it takes a lot of guts to do it, but when you're able to come in and step up and save the crew in that matter on a, on a cheap flag like that, I mean, that's how you get your name on the map for officiating the game. Yep. Exactly. I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, if you got some information, tell it. If someone doesn't want to take it, and and it's it's difficult too. You've thrown your flag, so when you throw it, you think you've seen something. You're pretty confident because you otherwise you wouldn't have thrown it. You know, it's it takes a lot too to have someone come and say, you know what, I didn't see that, and you say, okay, you know, you you trust someone enough, or you go, maybe you think about yourself, and you go, well, maybe I didn't see it. You know, that's that's not hard, that's not easy to do because you've just you thought you saw something, you know, I mean, you've, you've thrown your flag. So you're pretty confident you have something if you've thrown it and it takes a lot on both sides to go tell someone and then for someone to take the information and, and do something with it and have, you know, kind of listen and, and have enough, you know, a low enough ego that you're going to listen to people. And maybe once in a while think, oh, maybe they're right. And I'm not, that's, that's not easy to do, but I think good people, good ones do that. Mark, I'm going to have you kick off this play. Okay. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of trips out there. Uh, and sometimes, Ken, it's hard for us to look through those trips. And I think the first thing is we got to recognize – when you see this, Ken, are you, first thing you're going to do is recognize if it's press coverage, right? Yeah. I You know, and if, if I look down the line and I can see a defender in my peripheral – and I call that press, you know, 
because obviously I'm looking more in the offense than the defense. So this one, I should see that guy, obviously, you know, looking down there, that guy's going to be in my line of vision. So, I mean, for with now with five man, I think you got to be aware of what's going on at the bottom to start with in case something happens immediately. But uh, uh, I'm just making sure I can see everybody on my side of the ball, you know, for the false starts and those things. But I try to hopefully recognize the defense and that's be the first place I go. Cause even with seven man with trips, I try to see all three initially, even in this formation where they're not really bunched together. You, you can see all three of them for a while and then you kind of pick where the action's going to be. So let's go ahead and play that Kurt. And we, we, we kind of came to the conclusion that, that the only guy that's going to be able to help out on this play was the uh, the umpire. Don't you agree, Kirk? Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't look like much in this angle, but when we go to the end zone, you guys will see the the tug that they saw. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask Kent, um, and this might not be the best screenshot to talk about it, but you know, you, you're talking about having you know enough peripheral vision to see what's going on. What are you, what, how do you focus your eyes when it does come to the snap and you're looking for false starts? Um, our wing officials are responsible for, you know, false starts probably all the way into the, the interior receiver and maybe even looking at the ball or a twitch or how do you, how do you train your eyes to be still but yet see so much? Well, first of all, I move my body so I can see everybody. I can see, so this play, I'd probably be a little bit downfield because the, Three receiver in there is kind of covering up the tackle a little bit. You know, it would be um, hard to see from the outside. So I would move down probably half a yard because then I can see that. And I try to look at the ball and focus toward the offensive side. Because if a guy jumps in the defense, I can – if he jumps in, then I can see that. But I'm trying to go from the ball out and look. I try to see where I can have everybody in my peripheral. Um, Plays like this are a lot harder than being on the other at the top of the screen here. Then that shouldn't be much of a problem. But I move my body first so I can see everybody. And sometimes, you know, if I can't see the tackle very well, I gotta try to look at him and look at the ball out of my peripheral. I don't know. That's not kind of how you're supposed to do it, but that's what I do because I'm more worried about that. You know, the snap. I should have some help if something goes wrong with that. I would hope. So, you know, the ball is the main thing so that. You're not calling ones where guys move with the ball and that, but I just try to position my body first. I'm turning my head. I'm looking at the ball, but I'm turning my head toward the offensive side. We'll go to that end zone shot, and we can debate whether this is a hold or not. It, it certainly is a tug down. Be tough to see for us. I don't know that we're we're looking for that very often. That's a tough spot in a five-man mechanic with trips that way. Yeah, I I, I think the white hat's got a tough job seeing through that to actually see that happen too. Yeah, I hope they didn't miss it in this game with eight guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's eight of them out there, huh? Yeah. All right, let's jump to the next one here. So it looks like they're getting that uh, tackle again, that right tackle. Let me go back to here. I'll show you, you got. Yeah. I, mean, Ken, I, think, I don't know, Kent, if, if, you know, if an off wing, a wing that, that's just a hard play for. Well, that, that's the, that's got to be the referee in yeah. any of them. Because it's, like we said, there's guys out there blocking, they're going to block his vision, you know. And that's where that's at. That's got to be the referee. Let's see if we got an end zone to this. Can you talk, Kent, about, um, what kind of body language that, that you look for on the, the defender 
And we talk about when they look clumsy, they likely were influenced to look well, clumsy. Well, on this play, one thing I've learned, they can't tackle with their back. So if they got their back to the to the if they got their back to the running back, it's probably a problem because that's really not a posture you use to play football <laughs> very well. So I mean, I think we talk about you watch the feet of linemen if they're swinging around. You know, look at how they are. That you got the defensive guys on the offensive more to the offensive side of the ball with his back turned to it. That's he's not going to do that on his own. You know, you look at that. He's He's, I mean, so those are things I look at, you know, for holding to see if guys are just, that's not how they, how. The normal body motion you're saying, right? To make a tackle. Yeah. You know, it just seems like, you know, when you have a good hold, the guy just gets, he doesn't have a chance to make the play because he looks awkward because like this guy here, you know, he's, he's spun him around. Good point. Yeah, nobody nobody turns their back to a runner from a defensive standpoint, do they? Good comments. All right, I don't think I saw this one. Looks like we've got a deep or an off left guard or left tackle. Yeah, it's a good play here. Oh yeah. We're looking right in here. Yeah, it's definitely a hold. Um, so, Kent, th this flag was thrown not by the line of scrimmage guy. It was by the center judge. What yeah. else? I mean, this this should be – this should fall in his lap, shouldn't it? Um, yeah, no? he should be looking back there. Because you got trips at the bottom. You got a single receiver at the top. I mean, yeah, he – No, I don't know. Five-man, maybe he's following the receiver. In, in a five-man thing, it might be – but once you sense the run, you got to – Get back, you know. Um, in this mechanic, he should see it because uh, you have a back, and he's watching that guy, and you know. But it's just like you said earlier; you just officiate the nearest threat. Right. When the quarterback runs, you got to look at, ahead of him for blocks and. You know, I don't know, in a five man if the umpire would see this as, you know, pretty deep in the offensive backfield. Yeah. You know, and, you know, on this play, you can say, well, it was, you know, the only one guy there. Yeah, he should probably see it. But you never know during the game when you have trips that way or, or two receivers over there. Yeah. You know, so uh, you just try to – once the play happens, you just try to go to the point of attack. And, okay. Well, and – See if you can find a foul. See the umpire gets through this. So, yeah. and that was I think this is a pretty good umpire call here. I think we should be able to see this as umpires. Yeah. Well, the end zone gives us a good perspective too to help clarify. There you go. So, is there enough pull there or restriction? Um, but it didn't, the end zone doesn't look great for it, you yeah. know, it, boy, it's tough to tell if he, if he just blocked him and this guy did this, or if he, he really hooked him, it's hard to tell there, you know. I think it's a foul. But it sure looked like it on the side. Yeah, on the sideline view that we had. Let's see this one. I mean, that's a foul all day. It's right at the point of the tag. Right. The guy's gonna make that tag. Yeah, you can see the guy's arm reach out. You can see him grab him. He's he reaches his arm out and can't do anything. So he's got he's got good position right here. Yeah. He's good. It's right right there. There's the yeah. problem. That's right. that clumsy body language. That... By, yeah, he's you know he's turned toward the runner. There it is. Yeah. Hey, Kurt, I, why don't we jump to play 26, and then let's go through the high school clips because can't spend some time looking at those. So let's do play 26 and then gotcha. look at the high school clips. Hey, Mark, did you ever find that other play? Kurt did. Okay, nice. Okay, so we're at the top of the, top of the screen here, aren't we? So we got let's, – let's recognize the formation first here, guys. So we got – 
three receivers at the top, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Terrence can probably comment on this. Is that is that guy going out for a pass route? No, just watch this whole action. I mean, if you're running out for a pass route, when you get to the defender, you're going to try to make a move left or right. I mean, he just goes right at the guy and tackles him. That's the back judge's call all day. That's the third receiver in for, you know, seven-man mechanics, what we do. But just think about this action. He's not trying to run a route. This opens wide up to you. I mean, it's like the only thing out there to be looking at. And he just tackles that guy. It came from the side judge on this play, but not the back judge. But, I mean, we got to get this one. Because see how he goes right at the, the guy covering him? I mean, he doesn't even, has no intention of running a route. Except for the line guy to see that because he's got 63 out there. You know, he's probably watching the runner and 63, even though there isn't any, you know, you know that's pretty far downfield. Hey, yeah, you're right. The, Terrence, the back judge should have this. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to get day. it. So, so from a formation standpoint, they don't throw this downfield. They throw it behind the line of scrimmage. But is that formation legal for us? Or is he covered up? He doesn't look covered to me. I think no. we like to make this what it's supposed to be. That's our goal is try to make it legal if we can. And there looks like just a just enough separation between the helmets and hips here and yep. here for these guys to be off. But I think there'd be a, a good comment to be made. He's kind of in no man's land out there. I think when they're split out like this, when, when they're not tight, boy, you try to give them as much leeway as you can. If even if he does have them covered up a little bit, I when when they're s spread out like this, because they're really not gaining any advantage is maybe you tell a guy to move back or tell a coach, you know, your guy's formation's getting kind of shaky. Make sure these guys are lined up where they need to be. So that's, that's kind of a play where that, that penalty is going to leap, cause our flag to come out of the pocket. That's that. Those are the ones that we like to see a flag on. Yeah. Well, he's got him outsized, too. He looks like he's twice as big as that guy. All right, so, Mark, you want that was it, and then you wanted to go yeah. to the – Yeah, let's go to those, those, those other clips now. Okay. Did you want to go to that uh, 3A game, one play, or should we go yeah, to this? Yeah, let's do that. Since we just got done talking about formations. Yeah. You go to that play real quick, and we'll get the expert opinion on this. Okay. Not this play. No. I think this is the play, Mark. Yes, it is. Let me uh, let me get this set up here. Give me a sec. So, Ken, talk to us about this play right here. Go back to the, before the snap. Okay. We're worried about formation. So the line of scrimmage is the 41. So we just saw that previous play that you were talking about, blade of grass and all that. Look where the receiver is at the bottom of the screen down here, and then right. the guy that's on the top up there. What do you? What's your thoughts on this play? Illegal. Illegal. That's not on the line. Say that again. The guy at the top needs to move up. Okay. Okay. So we're not. I mean, you you can't you can't buy that blade of grass theory hard, on the. Yeah, right? that's hard to. That's hard to get. Say he's close enough. You know, he's a yard off. I mean, his head isn't even breaking the. You know, like you said, you compare him to the guy at the bottom. Yeah. That's what he should look like. Exactly. Okay. I just wanted to bring that up. I know we talked about this play a few weeks ago. Yeah, and I think I think the consensus was we want to try to make this legal. And I, I kind of lean back, Kent, on your previous comment about when they're spread out like that, you give them a little bit of grace. Um, I mean, I'm giving them a little bit of grace for covering each other up. But I don't give them much for – they need to be on the line. Because I want them to look at me. I try to tell them ahead of time, look at me, because I'm going to – I'll put you I'll put you where you need to be. Because I would know on this play this guy needs to move up. So um, so you're not telling them to move up or anything, right? What, what's the conversation? Or how do you work that? Receiver comes out, you're standing there. He's like, where's the line? Or 
What does that whole dialogue go I mean, like? If you, like this, I, I would physically use my hand to tell him to move up. Oh, okay. So you would tell him, move up. Yes. Okay. So if let's say he's moving, as you're telling him to move up and the ball snapped, what would you, what, how do you handle that? What's that? Let's say you're in the process of telling him to like move up or whatever, and then the center snaps the ball. Well, it's still on him because he didn't line up. He was fouling to start with. Okay. Okay. So, because that can happen, right? And then yes. you got the other team land. What the hell? This guy's moving up and they're snapping the ball, you right. know? Okay. Yeah. We, we've tried hard and, and we're, you know, we've got a, a big range of level of officials. And one of the things that we've tried to, to make it clear is we don't want to move players. Um, I, we've had experiences where a, a, an official that maybe newer official tries to get them lined up and then they're moving at the snap. And then he said, the coach or the, yeah, the coach says, what the hell, Tommy? And he says, he told me to move up. And then we're chewing the officials on the sidelines ass. And so we try hard to not tell them what to do, but to tell him where that line, where that line is and maybe take it. Oh, I'm not telling him. He looks at me and I, he's looking at me for an answer. I'm going to tell him, I'm not f verbally telling him, I'm motioning him to move up. Yeah, you can put your f leg out and tell him, here's the line, but I want to, I don't want to, I don't want this situation to come up. Because when he, if he comes out and looks at me, uh, I'm going to try to put him where he needs to be. I don't think this guy ever looks, yeah. you know, uh, and if, you know, well, maybe if it's your individual player, coach, I don't line up. Hey, Kurt, I'm hearing a lot of background noise. Yeah, I don't know that audio. It almost sounds like it's on Kent's end. Hey, Kent. Yeah. Kent, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it's on his end. Hang on, let me try to get a hold of him. Yeah, I shouldn't. So, so one of the things we want to talk about on this play, and Kirk and I talked about it too, is that, you know, it's really important, guys, for us to get out there when they're warming up uh, to look at these guys and see how they're lining up. We could we could prevent a lot of flags if we're looking at them during warm-ups warm -ups and saying, hey, make sure you look, check with me. I'll, I'll put my foot out and give you the line, but – Right now, if this if you did this in the game, there's chances are you're going to get called on it. So it's really important when we go out there to get lined up and start looking at these wideouts wing guys to make sure that you can help prevent this before it even happens. Hey, Ken, can you hear us now? I can hear. I've been able to hear you the whole time. Oh, okay. You were real garbled. It's like you were okay. in a tank or something. Okay. Yeah, okay. I didn't. It's all good. Okay. I didn't move at all. So. All right, let's jump to these uh, plays that I had. Can't take a look at. We got about 15 minutes left here. Um, let me see what we're focused on here. I didn't take any notes here. So this. Oh, I know the. This is a tough play. It's. Uh, oh, it is first down. But if it were, let's say, third down, I'm. I'm wondering if you can help us with again five man mechanics. We've got to cover the the uh, line to gain ten yards downfield, yeah. and we've got the potential to need the step of the backfield because players are players are coming our way. It's just a tough play to officiate a line yeah. to gain. Yeah, and it, I think this guy does everything right. When I look at this, yeah. he looks at the blocks. You know, there's some threats, but there's nothing really there. You know, and he gets a good spot because you know he's down short. I mean, there's there's no difference between that and and seven man or eight man mechanics you know you just gotta I, you know and the guy on the opposite side if he really misses the spot can come in and you know if he would give him a first down on this i think he could come in and change the spot but he does everything right here it's a good spot because it is short yep. you just take the blocks as they come and then you know it's eventually you go to the runner once he gets threatened. One of the keys. One of the keys we wanted we wanted to emphasize here is there's nothing going on back here. I think we get right. a lot of times our wings are watching action that, that there's no foul potential instead of watching this. And I, I agree. I think he does a great job. Eyes are right in this area where these critical blocks are going to occur here. This you know, he be, moves. He moves at the right time. You know, he starts heading back and then gets a good look at all. You know, there's all these blocks. And you know, getting the spies just you know you just got to. 
do what you can to see it. And then sell it, right? Yeah. Leave no doubt. Yeah, this is a good play. Let's see what I hit on this one. Screen. You know, I I assume and get and make sure I get the rule right. What what is the rule for ineligible downfield in the high school level? So if the ball is behind the line of scrimmage, no foul with lineman downfield. Okay. So I, I think this looks good. I, I'm not yeah. sure. I think I was just looking for some good line action and a screenplay is not uncommon. We can talk about screenplays when it is a, you know, I guess when it is, when it is caught beyond the line, I mean, if linemen are downfield, I know uh, the umpire has some responsibility, but I think the guy on the backside yeah. the, at the top in this case should have a pretty good idea if these guys, what's going on with these linemen. Cause he didn't really, this sets up as a screen pretty early. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's got a couple receivers over there, guys, but you know, no one kind of have a sense and, should have an idea of these if this is a legal play because sometimes the guy it's coming to it's a lot harder because he's got to watch the receiver and or the back and all that all this everything's good on this play though but this is pretty well handled because let's, let's talk a little let's let's talk a little bit at the end of the play here what do you think about this official do you think he was in too big of a hurry to get on top of the play he's kid he's running he's running he's running would yeah, you stop would, sooner yeah I would I would I would go up. Well, I would slow down at some point here and walk up to the play because there's no reason to. Yeah. The spot doesn't matter, you know. And if you go slow by it, you're going to see if you get these guys coming in late. If they hit some guy late, and that way you're staying back. And if anything happens, you got a pretty good shot of you know any dead ball fouls. So I would, you know, run down. But as you get there, start slowing down and even walk into the spot because. And if players are getting up and you're running in there, you can run into them too. So I mean, it's kind of hard to see the end here, but I would, you know, just slow down at the end because there's no reason to go fast on this play. Let's see. Let's see. We've got about nine minutes left. I'd like to go to these skirmish plays. Well, no, I got one more before we go to the skirmish. So I, I threw this one in. I don't know if there's a lot of detail we can get into, but I think what happens here to to lay out the play, the coach is going to yell timeout right before the snap. So we've got a player, defensive player, leaving the field. I don't know if they had 12 on there, or you'd, you'd assume. Um, but you've got a coach that's going to yell timeout right before the snap. Do you guys do you have any wisdom on this? You and Terrence? Kent? <laughs> Someone's going to be unhappy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I think we try to give them a timeout if we can. You know, uh, obviously they're messed up, but I don't know what kind of guidance <laughs> give on this because if you if you don't stop it, this guy's going to be mad because he was trying to call timeout, and then if you do, you know, the other guy didn't think it's called in time. It's pretty close. It's just it's kind of hard to tell here what happens, but. I think you lean, you lean toward giving them the timeout. I would say, Terrence, what do you think? Yeah, just lean towards if, if they want to use one of their timeouts for something like that and they make a point to call it and get in your face, just give them the timeout. It's kind of like a delay a game. If You might even get the zeros, but they call the timeout. You know, sometimes you give them the timeout because those are more precious than the five yards. Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost like the timeout is somewhat of a penalty of its own. Yes, especially yeah. I assume this is probably – when they're this messed up, they've taken a timeout somewhere during the game where they didn't really plan on taking one or didn't want to, that it's going to hurt them in the long run. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what I was looking for. So this uh, this next play, as we finish up the evening, and I – oops, not this one. There's a different – there's a better one. Oh, this is this is from last year's playoff. I think it was second second round of playoff maybe. And there's going to be a better angle, and I'll let it play through here. and. You know, as, as a wing official, especially at the level you guys work, I'm sure that you got all sorts of stuff that goes on on that sideline, although you got cameras that's going to take care of some of it. But this happens to just end in a lot of problems in the bench. And oh. we have ejection out of it. Hold on. And there'll be a, a drone 
Well, I, pretty, I gotta say something about. here. Look at look at this Perfect. official here on the near side. That, uh, that is awesome. That is that is awesome. I yeah. just that's that's big. That's a big time official right there. Yeah, absolutely. Because someone wants to go past him, then they're gone. You know that's yeah, uh, yeah. Kept everybody that's over there. You know the head coach can go, which he is. It appears, and you know this is handled really well because you let the coach go there and take care of his guys, and then and then this official on the. Because you're, it's easy. Opposite this, you start running over there, and that's not what you want to do. Now, this is a play. I'd go right to the bench area. I wouldn't worry about spot. I'd go right in there, because you know this is a problem. Because it was a late hit on this, clearly out of bounds, and someone's not going to be happy. Then good luck with the rest of it. <laughs> so. You're trying yeah. to you're trying to separate colors, right? When you go when you get into something like this, you're yes, yeah. You're trying to get colors separated. Yeah. Well, in this case, you'd probably want to go get nine out of there because someone's going to go after him because he's the they just did right he's now the guy yeah. right there that you know drills him. I don't know what you can do on this play because it's happened so fast that you know he hits the guy out of bounds and this guy comes like a missile over there to drill him. So. So now it's just, you know, now you just do it whoever you can. Yeah. Look at those five guys. You know, the guy on the bottom did a great job. You know, once he has everybody stopped, he can look over there, make sure someone doesn't come in cheap from outside this melee. Because when you're inside it, it's, it's like being in a car accident. You can say what you're going to do, but, you know, it, it, it just, it, it's so tough. This is this is horrible from so many levels. I mean, it's just it it almost ruins the game for a lot of people, officials, coaches, fans. They don't like this. Um, yeah. And I think in the end, we we didn't get the ejection correct. I think there there probably could have been an ejection from the other team here. I don't. It, it just it became so complicated, and I don't know what I was hoping for, Kent and and uh, Terrence. If if you guys have. I don't know, some way that you, know, you talk about slowing the game down. Man, if you could put this in slow motion right now so that you could see the, the bad and try to figure out numbers. But um, I don't know. I, You know, because you, then you got this, you know, you got all these players and this one guy comes in late. It's, yeah, you can sit here all night and talk about how you're going to handle this. But, I mean. It's a tough, to, it's a tough play to officiate. Absolutely. This, I'm not, but I will say this: I think the crew did, it, from an officiating standpoint, oh, I think the crew oh, they did, did great. great. They no. did great, but we're just—it's five of us against how yeah. I many, right? They did exactly, everything they did everything right. They it was this is as well handled as I've seen one of these things in a long time. Yeah, on any level, you know, it just yeah, it's hard. I mean, so one of the things, and I've watched this a bunch. So I wonder if there's a way for us. So we we see. We see nine come in and just obliterate that player at the sideline. So that's going to be a foul. I wonder if at this moment in time, our antennas have got to go up knowing that somebody is going to try to retaliate. We hope that they don't, but there's a strong chance somebody's going to go yeah. after nine. Yep. And so I think at that point, we've got our antennas have got to be up looking for the license plate of the guy. Who's going to do it? It's almost like, who, which one of you guys is going to be foolish enough to go? And there he is. Number six goes at him. Yeah, I, think a con I mean, I think – when you have a guy who get hit out of bounds, I think the wing guy could have ran, you know, just get in there quicker. It's probably not going to stop this guy, but maybe you get a chance to see him that he's that he's taking a cheap shot. Here's the one that got ejected right here. Oh, 29. And we'll watch what 29 does. And again, I, I I don't fault the officials. It just it's chaos. Yeah. So there he is. He's going to go in and retaliate to the guy that retaliated. There's the push by 29. Oh, yeah. So I assume that's what got him. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him because he will go out of, the, out of the scrum. There you see him facing us. Now he's facing the sideline. Let me fast forward here. He will run around the back door. Man. 
This is crazy. He's going to run around the back door and get in somebody's face over there. Oh. He does it. To, I don't know that he does it. Well, maybe he does. Oh, he's grabbing one of his own players out of there. Probably talking smack the whole time. So he's getting 32 out. And uh, he was the only one that got ejected here. I don't know. It's not the fun stuff of the game. I know that. And, um, we're at 829. And I cannot thank Kent, you enough. And Terrence has been with us uh, throughout all last year and, and this year. I know I speak for all these guys on the phone here or on the line. Um, we we love when you come talk to us. Your experiences are the best. Um, Kent, you got anything, any parting uh, message for us? I don't think so. I tell you, know, I, I've, Terrence has heard this, you know, enjoy it because obviously I've got to do some big stuff in my life, but, and I've told this to many people and some people look at Lenny like I'm crazy if they're not officials that <laughs> I had more fun doing high school football than anything I officiated, you know, cause I did basketball as well. Um, it's just, I, it's something I, I do miss. I, you know, I don't miss a lot of, a lot of other things I've done along the way, but I, I really, it's, it's like, it's the most fun I had and, uh, you know, just enjoy it. And I mean, there's nothing better than a Friday night with a band and all that and, and a high school game and that's, but, uh, you know, I admire everybody that does this, you know, it's not a, financially, it's not really, uh, something you're going to get rich doing, uh, and that, but you know, you, you have to have a love of it. And I appreciate everybody that does high school football because they're doing it truly because they have a love for the game and want to, want to see the game, uh, done properly, played properly and all that, you know, that, uh, yeah, I, I admire all high school officials. I truly do. So anyway, it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Awesome. Terrence, anything? No, there's nothing to be said after that. Nothing at all. Just good job. And thanks, thanks a lot, Ken, for joining us. We really appreciate thanks it. Thanks for asking me. Mark, wash your hands. Ken, yeah, go wash your hands, Kent. But uh, <laughs> really want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and, and helping us out tonight because – uh, you're a Denver guy. You started up in the same ranks as these guys here, and as well as Terrence and Scott Novak, and we are so blessed to have you guys helping us out and paying it forward. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you all for joining us. We'll, uh, we'll be back on in a couple nights to talk about more umpire mechanic. Look forward to seeing you there. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Call Linda Jones. Hey, Google.